Are you looking for your next game to add to your wish list? Well, I've got the video for you. First of all, hello and welcome to the channel. So our quarterly edition of Steam Next Fest just passed us by. And as always, it gave us an absolute ton of indie demos to get our grubby hands on. And here are some of the ones that I recommend you get added to your wish list. Zombie Cure Labs has it all from hordes of zombies attacking your lab and using the resources that are around you in the enclosed space. On top of this, you have to, well, do what it says on the tin, cure zombies. So you may as well throw away those apocalypse plans because we're about to stop it. The one part that I love about this is how you're almost in control before your first attack. You have to build smart as you eventually build up the score for zombie awareness of your newfound base. Do you prioritize renewable food, defense, or labs? It's completely up to you, but just a warning, this does build up fast and you'll soon find yourself under pressure from the hordes. The game is surprisingly challenging in a good way as you need to make sure you are fully capable of capturing and starting the process of running the cure. But my favourite thing about this game has to be the human zombie hybrids, the Hombies. The Hombies at this stage can be used to do more manual jobs around the lab but eventually they will turn into scientists. Each must exercise and learn before being fully converted back to humans and becoming fully fledged scientists who can help with more tasks then. Gather your favourite fermenting container because we're going to be talking Brewmaster now. This was a game I massively overlooked previously and snuffed at the idea but boy was I wrong. Even during the short 50 minute or so demo I found myself completely engorged as I bounced back between the fridge and ingredients cupboard, pouring yeast, malt extract and other things to make a stunning alcoholic beverage. The premise is pretty simple, you accept the job to make a quantity of specified beer but you must make sure everything is perfect from timing to the exact amount of flavouring and sugar. After brewing the beer you test it which then allows you to create a great looking packaging to sell your brewing and then you ship it off. On top of this, your brewery is set in a beautiful little house which is fully furnishable to make it truly yours. You can show off your achievements in your testing area. I'm just really hoping for some competitions to come in to decorate your brewery with some shiny trophies. Honestly, I reckon just give this one a go. You'll soon find yourself brewing all off the top of your head in no time. Misk A Tiny Tail is a stunning 3D platformer that puts you in the shoes of the cutest little robot ever. Each of the characters in Misk look like they are made from spare parts that have been left around the garden you inhabit. I couldn't get enough of the protagonist buddy. Each motion is carried by the cutest of noises. Each level has 8 cogs scattered around them and you must find these to open the gates to the next level. But in typical platformer style, each cog is blocked by a series of challenging platforms where you must precisely time your jumps, use your pin weapon or simply use the environment around you. I do think a lot of patience is required with this game as you will narrowly miss floating bottle caps to land on. I got to play through two of the levels in the demo, the first in the village and the second in the forest. And I love the diversity in these two levels, plenty of different looking textures for mushrooms, logs etc. I'm definitely excited to see more of this when it comes to the Switch and Steam later this year. Imagine if Stardew Valley met Spirit of the Way, that's exactly what you get with Spirit Tea. A town played with mischievous spirits have an unlikely hero come to the beck and call. Someone to run the local bathhouse. Because after all, the best way to calm a spirit is a bath. You are tasked with hunting down the ghosts using your special ability of ghost vision and returning them to the bath so they can get some downtime and become good again. In order to keep them happy, you must get the boiler running, clean the towels, provide food, scrub their backs, the list goes on. All of this will help raise money to get the bathhouse back on its feet and eventually maintain the tree that has become overgrown, allowing more spirits in and new rooms. <laughs> that does sound like an exhausting list of things to do, but not to worry because you can choose the opening hours of the bathhouse meaning you have plenty of time to visit visit the town, meet new friends and go to the local chicken shop and karaoke. There really is so much to do in this game and I'm really excited to see it come to fruition shortly. I've been singing this game's praises since I discovered it at WASD a couple of months back and I was super excited to get to play more of this in this beta version. Hard West 2 is a turn based RPG that takes you to the heart of the wild west that has seemingly been infested with supernatural magic and creatures. Build your posse and develop their skills to take a variety of enemies including local townspeople all the way to the living dead. There is never not a way to get out of a fight with each character having a multitude of abilities including ricocheting bullets, teleportation and spread damage while you can obtain a state of bravado which replenishes your action points meaning you could take out more enemies per turn. Further upgrades can be achieved through collecting cards around the overworld which provide bonuses to the assigned characters. You can build up relationships with your posse by setting up a camp where you can speak to them. I'm yet to see what happens with this but it'll be interesting to see if this provides some sort of combat bonus or whether it's purely for narrative reasons. We'll get to see more of this when it comes out later this year. The Last Worker presents a dystopian take on the automation of the workplace in a first person narrative adventure, taking place in a warehouse who have disposed of a living workforce in a rather non-humane manner in favour of automated procedures. Only one man is left. The lead protagonist travels through the hallways of Jungle after being recruited by a mysterious organisation to solve how to escape and take down the evil corporation. Sounds pretty bleak, doesn't it? But not to worry, because this game is bloody hilarious. With some great humorous dialogue, more than often led by the bot, Scoo, who I feel is continuously changing accents as he slowly breaks down. What I love about this character is how he contrasts the cynicism of the lead character, a man who has clearly had enough and just wants to get on with his life. 
How relatable is that? I love the hand-painted characters and environments from the comic book legend Mick Mamayan. These really give me those borderline vibes. On top of this, it's a pretty stud-packed voice acting list with Daddy Olsen, Claire Hopeshti and David Hewlett included. The gameplay loop is based on stealth as you hide away from the recently hired robots. You can use your gun to pull smaller robots in and fling them away before they alert the others. I'm intrigued about how this narrative ends as I love the mysterious nature of the underground organisation and how they plan to take down Jungle. We'll hopefully get to see more later this year. Now I'm not normally one for Souls likes, but the tarnishing of Duxtia had me engrossed. I never once felt frustrated which is massively unusual for me. No matter how many times I am alive, I would bounce back for more. The challenge was just so satisfying in this game. On top of this, we are surrounded by a beautiful pixelated world where the tarnishing has truly taken over. I do love the colour scheme of this game with the red and greys consumed by the purple blobs of the tarnishing. The combat in typical Souls-like style relies on a combination of magic, stamina based dodging, light and heavy attacks. But with the combination of the platforms, you have plenty of ways to defeat the horde of enemies. The creature design in this game is phenomenal as well. My jaw dropped as I saw the old stag impaled on top of a tree and even more so when he started to speak. I did feel it was really well done. And I really like how after reaching a certain level of HP, certain enemies unlock a new attack, which really keeps you on your toes. Overall, I was really impressed with the tarnishing of Juxtier, and I'm certainly excited to see more and a release date soon. Well, that's it for my list. This doesn't do the event any justice whatsoever, which truly had something for everyone. What do you think of the list? Is there any games that you would add? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully we'll be seeing another Steam Next Fest now in October with an even bigger variety of demos. If you'd like to stay up to date with that event and see some of my favourite games from that as well as other indie news all year round then don't forget to hit that sub button or you can follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Again big thank you all for watching and I shall see you very very shortly.